Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock to determine whether it's a buy or a sell. At the end of the video, we're going to look at the financial ratios. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at is Chartwell Retirement. And this company was founded in 2003. Chartwell offers independent living, assisted living, and long term care across Canada. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $2.2 billion. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. They're trading at $10.47 a share. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flow and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their actual free cash flow. That's cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And then we're going to pull the net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. And we'll put that into the model, take a quick look at the numbers. Everything looks pretty good. They did have negative free cash flow in 2019. So they could have been investing in their business. And their sales have been increasing every year. So that's a good sign. Let's look at a capital structure. They pay 85 million of interest on their debt. Current debt of 206 million. That's debt due within 12 months. Long term debt of 2.2 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. The cost of debt is 3.5%. Let's get the beta to figure out the cost of equity. The beta is how volatile the stock is. So it's 1.02, so the stock moves with the Canadian market. Let's get their current assets. We need just to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets is on a balance sheet, and that's $88 million. And that's 22 million of cash, 20 million of net receivables. This is how much money other companies owe this company, 20 million of other. Let's get the current liabilities, that's 391 million. And that's 206 million of current debt, 137 million of accounts payable. That's how much money this company owes other companies. 693,000 deferred revenue. These are payments a company receives in advance of delivering a product or service. So they book it onto the balance sheet as a liability. But when they actually deliver the product or service, they take it off the balance sheet and put it onto the income statement. 12 million of other. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet at 837 million, 2 billion of common stock, negative 121 million of retained earnings, so they're operating at a loss historically, negative 12 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's get their operating income, that's $97 million. That's how much money they make on their operational business. Let's look at a capital structure, 74% debt, cost of debt 3.5%, 26% equity, cost of equity 10.15%, and the WAC is 5.25%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows, that's here in blue. We also estimate a terminal value of 660 million. That's all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company of $620 million. We divide that by 210 million shares and we come up with a calculated stock price of $3. It's trading at 1047, so it's trading at 255% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street, they're at 575. So they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it was trading around $15, $16 for a while, then dropped quite a bit. Came up a little bit, but not too much, sitting around 1045. Let's look at the financial ratios. Terrible price to earnings, good price to sales, good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15 there at 2061. So investors are paying $2,000 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5 there at 2.4. So investors are paying $2.40 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. 
I like to see below 3.5 there at 2.6. So investors are paying $2.60 for $1 of book value. Bad current ratio, bad ROE, and a decent interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, so they may have to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity, and they don't provide any value to the equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest payments just by a little. This looks like a stock that could really struggle during coronavirus because I know the elderly community is more susceptible. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.